Hello and welcome to the Healer Within podcast where I share with you my opinions on health and healing. This is my own personal journey, so please know that none of the information shared is meant for treatment, diagnosis, or to be used as a substitute for medical advice. Please seek out a medical professional for all your health-related concerns and remember your you are responsible for your own well-being. So let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome so much to this space today. I woke up this morning and started making my tea. I made some like nettle tea and some red raspberry leaf tea, and I got really inspired to come on here and share with all of you what I like to use as far as medicinal herbs and tinctures because I'm really passionate just about homeopathy and Ayurvedic studies for medicine and what we put into our bodies to allow them to perform to their highest and best. Like health is wealth, like at the center and the core of everything that I love and everything that truly inspires me. So I'm just really, really passionate about everything about food and herbs. And when I eat, I typically think in terms of what vitamin, what nutrients is in this food that's going to provide me with what I need. And I do enjoy, I love eating. I love indulgent food, but I always do think about that. So let's dive in. So if you hear me drinking some tea, I will try to keep it away from the microphone. I'm on my raspberry leaf tea this morning. I had my nettle tea earlier and it's just so rich in anti-aging antioxidants. It helps protect against fighting cancer, high in fiber. It helps with your brain, your memory, cognition, and it's high in vitamins A, C, E, iron, calcium, potassium, and it improves your uterine health. I'm in my third trimester of pregnancy, so that is why I am drinking it, but it's also just a really great tea to drink in general. I typically just brew it in my French press. I prefer the French press to brew all of my teas because to me, it's just so much easier. I have a small one and a large one, and I just put the loose leaf tea in the bottom and then pour the hot water over the top and let it steep and pour it into a cup. I think it's much easier to clean and it's just my preferred way to brew my tea rather than having it in the little like tea balls that you like dip inside of your cup. I buy most of all of my herbs and teas from an apothecary. I buy them in bulk. So it is just really important that when we do, are purchasing our teas and herbs that we do research and we find reputable sources that we are getting them from because they aren't necessarily regulated. And if you're buying them from other countries, they're a little bit sometimes extra not regulated depending on where you're buying them from. Like if it's from India, even though India does practice a lot, like they are like the heart of homeopathy and Ayurvedic studies and medicine and health medicine, some of the tinctures and maybe herbs and vitamins that you might buy from them if you are living in the U.S., it might not be the best option because they aren't regulated and you can get a lot of things and different herbs and spices that ha could have like lead or heavy metals in it. So it's just really important to do your research. That's that's what I have. So pretty much as I go through everything with you today, um, I really just implore you to do some research before you just dive into anything, talking to your medical professional if that feels the best for you. I'm only sharing with you the things that I use on an almost daily basis or I use frequently throughout the year. There are so many different home remedies and different things that you can do for different types of ailments with so many, with so many different foods and spices and herbs. Um, but I am just going to touch on a few different, I guess you would call them ailments um, or issues, bodily issues um, that I address regularly and the things that I use for them. So there is that. 
So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing I want to discuss is Bonsuelia or Boswellia or frankincense. So Boswellia comes from frankincense and it is a really powerful anti-inflammatory. I absolutely love Bonsuelia. I I don't use, so full disclosure, like I don't have any drugstore or over-the-counter medicines in my home except for Benadryl. I was just trying to think, like, what do I have? I was like, I keep Benadryl because I feel like that's a very safe one. It can be a lifesaver. I do know several people with really extreme allergies, and it can just be a really helpful tool to have in the first aid kit. So I keep Benadryl in my first aid kit um, that I carry with me and then also at home. But instead of using like an ibuprofen or an aspirin or an Advil, Boswellia or frankincense is something that I will use quite frequently. So you can get it in a m- bunch of different forms. I have a tincture that's an oral form. And then I have like pills where you can get like supplements of it. And then I also have oil. So you can have it topically as well. So the oil I have is just the pure frankincense. And I use that actually on my face for anti for inflammation and bacteria so that helps with breakouts when i use the frankincense on my face every day i don't have any breakouts and the redness goes away any type of swelling in my face and then if i have any like pain so headache aching the boswellia supplements or the tincture is the best option for me and that is what i like to use instead of using like opting for um, a pill like a ibuprofen or an Advil or an Aleve because at the heart of everything, so how I view medicine is I really love that at this point in our lives, like we have been able to create antibiotics and things and have surgery to help so many people's lives. I think it's an absolutely beautiful and magical and wonderful and innovative thing. However, I don't like to overuse those things. I think they have a place and they have a purpose for very specific things and ailments when it's an absolute necessity. But most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, it really isn't a necessity. And that is just something that each individual will have to scope out and determine for themselves. You know, so for me, it's like a 90% unnecessary thing. And I feel that I'm able to get the same results with other things that I'm able to grow in my garden or get at the apothecaries rather than go and buy it in a drugstore or go to a doctor's office for it. So that's just my opinion on that as we dive forward. And all right, so let's continue. So that is Bonsuelia or frankincense that I use for anti-inflammation, pain, and antibacterial stuff. I'm only going to touch on like one other pure um, oil or herb plant, and then we're going to get into actual ailments um, like cold and flu, dandruff, memory, fibromyalgia, and toothache are the ones I'm going to touch on. But before we dive into that, I also just want to say something about myrrh. So I love myrrh oil. That's M-Y-R-R-H. And myrrh oil is like an antiseptic and it's absolutely amazing, like antibacterial. It's it's incredible. So I use myrrh oil for all of my cuts, scrapes, burns. I even put it on my tattoos. So instead of like I've been getting tattooed for a very long time. So years ago, I might use like an A&D ointment or like a petroleum, like a jelly, petroleum jelly, or even just like an unscented lotion or just something like that, like an oil. Now I literally, I just use myrrh oil, like straight up. I keep it in my first aid kit at all, all times. Um, absolutely love it. So it's like a great option instead of like a neosporin, like it's absolutely incredible. 
So, and it's, it's really funny because both of the things that I've mentioned so far are biblical. So frankincense and myrrh are two of the things that the wise men supposedly brought Jesus in the Bible, the Christian Bible. So I think that is so funny and so wonderful that that's in there because I really just respect and love it because it is, they are genuinely, absolutely wonderful things to use. And I think that has a really great deal to do with like just medicine and the things that we've created since those times. We're also going to touch on gold because they also bring him gold. And that is something that I also use um, in almost my daily life. I've run out right now. I need to order some more, but it is something that I absolutely love. So, all right. So before we touch on that though, let's get into cold and flu. So this has to do with any like cold and flu, coughing, just any type of that general sickness. I typically stay away from having to go to the doctor unless it's absolutely necessary. Like I don't necessarily have a, what is it called? General practitioner, like someone that I see all the time because I I just don't go enough to even need that. Like I don't, I just don't. So for cold and flu, I like to create like my own antiviral and antibacterial antibiotic in a way. So, and I use this all from things from my kitchen. And if you don't have these things in your kitchen, you can always stock up on them just in case when cold and flu season comes around or just when you start to feel sick, just go get these things. And it works absolute wonders. So I like to make like a tea and then I drink this tea three times a day. And It has really helped me for any type of flu or cold. Full disclosure, it does not taste good. Like it is not like, ooh, this is so delicious. This is an amazing tea. It's more like you, I drink the tea and it's not, it doesn't taste good. However, it is so healing and it feels good. Like after you drink it, especially if you're sick, you have a cold flu and you wake up in the morning and you just feel really awful. And then you drink this cup of tea. And then afterwards, like you're feeling so good. It's kind of like a Theraflu, you know, like if you've ever taken like a Theraflu, like it kind of like really helps with those symptoms. It's like that, but instead it's actually helping suppress while actually fighting what's going on inside your body. Whereas the Theraflu is more of like actually just hiding the symptoms until you get better. It's not actually like really helping to fight the symptoms. So what I use in the tea is onion. So you want to like boil, like slice up some onions and just boil it in some water. And because they're like very like antibacterial, antiviral onion. Very, very good. So I just boil some onion in some water. And then I put in a cinnamon stick. So if you don't have a cinnamon stick, like you can always use like ground cinnamon. But I prefer a cinnamon stick. Then I do like lemon. So you really want like vitamin C when you have the colder flu. So for this tea, I use a fresh squeezed lemon. So it's, you boil the onion water, cinnamon stick, fresh squeezed lemon. And then I like to put a little bit of apple cider vinegar. It does not taste good. It's really horrible. Um, And then you can put, if you want to put some garlic in there, you can just like chop up a little garlic and let it kind of boil. And then after it kind of like begins to like steep, you can put in some honey, also ginger. So for the ginger, you can like get fresh ginger and chop it, or you can get just like a ginger tea bag. Like if you get like a bag of the ginger tea, ginger turmeric tea, ginger mandarin tea, like whatever kind of ginger tea. It's very anti-inflammatory and you just steep it in there and let the tea sit. And then in a few minutes, you can go ahead and drink the tea and it's absolutely amazing. So we're going to touch on all the things that I use for cold and flu. That's just the tea that I make. So I drink that three times a day and I'll provide a little link down, not a link, but like I'll write it down below just in case anyone's interested in making that tea three times a day. 
Um, absolutely amazing. I remember the last time I got really sick. I had the excuse me, I have hiccups. I had the flu and it usually that lasts for like a week or more for me. And I knocked it out within three days with doing this. Absolutely amazing. Um, so on top of that, I'll also like to take echinacea and elderberry. So echinacea is a very powerful antiviral. You can also make this in the form of a tea. So teas are just really nice when you're sick. It's you need to get liquids down typically, at least I do. And it just really helps flush out the system. And it's just kind of nice to like be cozy up on the couch or in bed with a nice cup of tea. So I make like an echinacea tea. Typically by itself, it's going to taste a lot better. And then I usually just sweeten it with whatever I want to sweeten it with. I stay away from sugar. I don't have sugar in my house. I don't use it. Uh, I use honey. I use date syrup. I use maple syrup or I use date sugar. So that would just essentially just freeze dried dates and you grind them up. And that's all, all the things that I use. I stay away from brown sugar, white sugar, any type of sugar fake sugar. I don't, I don't really mess with any of that. So just things that you get like natural sugars from like fruits and veggies and stuff like that. I prefer it. I think it's better for us. Um, so you can sweeten your tea however you'd like, but I would highly recommend if you're sick to just stay away from the sugar, um, white sugar and brown sugar, just because you're, you're fighting a sickness. So maybe not the best best boost for the body, but your choice. And then for the elderberry, it's a powerful antioxidant and antiviral, and I will get the lozenges. So this you can get, I feel like anywhere, it's like Publix or Walmart's, King Super, um, any large, any store, any most, most any grocery stores, Target, um, stores like that. I'm like trying to think of anywhere else. I'm like, I don't think anywhere else might have it. Like where do I shop at the most? Like all those different places. Are you going to try to find the elderberry lozenges? And those I use a lot during when I'm sick. So I'll have the teas. I'll have the like antibiotic tea that I mentioned earlier. I'll have the echinacea tea and then I'll have the elderberry lozenges. And that really, really helps. Okay. So, and then the last thing is going to be like a chicken soup for immune boost. And if you don't do chicken, like, of course you can do like a veggie broth. However, like the chicken bone broth, like a chicken soup is just going to be like really good for the immune system. So that's what I do. So I'm just going to go through every single thing that I use for cold and flu real quick. I'm going to tell you what they do. And then and then, yeah, so then you'll just have all that information. <laughs> so it's going to be garlic, and that is for antiviral and antibacterial. Onion, which is for antibacterial. Ginger for anti-inflammatory. Echinacea for antiviral. I use honey for a cough suppressant, and it coats my throat. I use elderberry for antioxidant and antiviral. And I use vitamin C to be... Um, to boost my immune system. And I get that in forms of like lemons, oranges, or kiwis. But you can also like just get like vitamin C, like capsules or vitamins or something. Cinnamon. I, le- I love cinnamon. Um, and I use cinnamon sticks in my tea, but you can use a powder. I just think like the sticks, when you steep it, it like is easier to consume because there's not like chunks or flakes of cinnamon. It's like the cinnamon is getting into the drink without like having all the little flakes in it. And then chicken soup for an immune boost. And that is everything that I use for cold and flu instead of buying like cold and flu medicine or like over-the-counter stuff. And typically I can knock it out within like three days if I'm doing all of this stuff regularly. And typically when you feel bad, you keep you keep up with it because you feel bad. So if you do these things and you feel better, then it's easier to keep up with it until you feel better. Um, I'll also do like if I can't sleep, some chamomile tea like at night when I have the cold and flu. Um, you can also do like valerian. There's like several different like teas that you can take to help you sleep better. But I prefer like just a chamomile 
that I'll brew um, with some honey. There's like a tea, I forget what it's called, but I have like a lemon pound cake tea and it is a chamomile based tea and it is very good. It's like a dessert tea, uh, but it's chamomile. So it's really great to have before bed. And so if you're sick and you're looking for something to help you sleep through the night, it's like for me, I'll drink the icky tea and then I'll have like the echinacea or some peppermint maybe. And then I'll have like chamomile. I know it's like a lot of tea, (laughs) but it really, it works for me. So maybe that'll help you as well. All right. So the next ailment that we're going to touch on is dandruff because I am someone who just, I don't know, my scalp, I just get dandruff. It just is. And, you know, a lot of like dandruff shampoos are not the best. A lot of them have like sodium lauryl sulfate. My husband is personally allergic to sulfates. And over time, it's just like really, it's a chemical that isn't the best for your scalp. Uh, it just isn't good for you. <laughs> so we're not really going to touch on that, but we're just going to touch on the natural things that I use almost every day or at least every week in my hair. So I, my go-to choice is coconut oil. Um, however, I do know several people who are allergic to coconuts. So they can't use that. So I have other options that I use because sometimes when I hang out with them or I'm around them, I'll use these other options, right? So when I'm at home though, and I'm not around anyone with any allergies, I use coconut oil because it's an antibacterial. You can use it for anything. I not only use coconut oil for like dandruff, but I, we also use it for lube. It's absolutely incredible. You can use it as moisturizer. So, but it really, really helps with dandruff. So I just moist, like massage it into my scalp. I let it sit. Sometimes I let it sit overnight. It really just depends on like what I'm doing, but then you just wash it out and there you go. It just like takes away the dandruff. I've also used olive oil. I use olive oil less than any of the other ones. I use coconut oil the most, but I have used olive oil and it has very similar effects on dandruff in the scalp. Neem oil is absolutely amazing. So I always have neem oil in the house. It's really good for dandruff, but it's also really good for just like overall skin and hair health. It does have a very particular weird smell that a lot of people don't like. I I think it smells decent, like pretty good. I think it smells like sweet chocolate, but my husband thinks it smells like rotten chocolate and rancid and uh so it really i don't know it really just depends but it also uh keeps bugs away so if you're looking to like get rid of lice or keep bugs just away in general like sometimes i'll make like bug spray out of memes and stuff but yeah it can be a different we can talk about that a different time but um, the neem oil for the dandruff i also will put some neem oil straight up in my hair if i go to a movie theater I know it sounds kind of wild, but if you think about it, like the movie theater, cloth seats, a lot of people sitting on them, like it, it could be easy to get lice there. So I just put a little neem oil in my hair and it would deter any bugs from like wanting to get into my hair. So apple cider vinegar is the last one that I use for dandruff. So this is kind of like if I don't have any of the other things, I do love apple cider vinegar for a lot of things. And it does work on my scalp for dandruff. It's absolutely amazing. But it isn't my first choice. It's definitely my last choice. But it may be someone out there who is listening's first choice. So maybe it works for you and it's your preferred method of action. So that was coconut oil, olive oil, neem oil, or apple cider vinegar. All can be used for dandruff and all that I have used for dandruff. And now we're going to jump into memory. So memory and brain health is just, is really important to me. I, and I think it's something that we are able to manage just with like dementia and Alzheimer's and all the brain deterioration that happens through like our food and aging and sugars, all different kinds of things that just like really destroy the brain. I think it is really important. So my first Thing that I absolutely love is ginkgo bilboa, biloba, ginkgo biloba. <laughs> and this really helps get the brain more oxygen and blood. However, 
it is really important to do research to make sure someone is able to take this herb because if you have high blood pressure or if you're taking like other medications like it is it could possibly be i think dangerous so it isn't for everyone right this particular herb isn't for everyone so you definitely would just need to do some research to see if it would be okay for you to use talk to your healthcare provider um, but i really like this herb in the form of like a tincture um, you can get it like like for a homeopathy tincture and what homeopathy is is it takes like an herb um, or like a substance and it like dilutes it to a degree where it's safe to use in the body and the body can naturally react to it because a lot of things used in homeopathy can actually be toxic if you just like eat them or take them like outright like without it being properly homeopathified no like diluted like without it being com like done in a very proper scientific and a chemical way so that is really important to remember okay so then we have omega fatty acids like what we find in fish and nuts so i take my omegas every day so you can just get like an omega supplement again you want to do your research my favorite brands are like thorn um i also really love the needed brand but thorn is what i use for my omegas and and if you're getting like a decent amount of fatty fish in your diet and you're having nuts that have omega-3s in it, that's just really, really good for overall memory and brain health. And then the last thing that I use for memory and brain health is collodial gold. So at the beginning, we kind of touched on frankincense and myrrh and how it relates to like biblical text well this is the gold i was talking about so the three wise men brought franken or brought jesus three things when he was born in the story of the bible and it was frankincense myrrh and gold and all of those things i use almost in my daily life if not like just multiple times throughout the year and collodial gold is one of them so if you've heard of collodial silver it's similar to that and it's something it's a tincture so you can just you take it orally and it helps the way the nerves and the cells in the brain and body like function and communicate with each other and i noticed like a huge difference with just like a day or two of taking it regularly um, I think you take it, I'm out right now, so I don't have the bottle with me. I was taking it, I think, twice a day, like in the morning and at night. And I saw some a huge, significant changes um, just in the way like my brain was functioning, my focus, Ooh, hiccup, excuse me, um, et cetera. So that could be good for some of you. I don't know. So I would just suggest, you know, doing your own research, talking to your healthcare provider, seeing if any of this could you're interested in do your research this is just stuff that i use all right so that was memory that was ginkgo biloba omega threes and collodial gold from memory and that helps like fight against things like alzheimer's or dementia like memory loss which to me is really important so then the last two things all right so we have fiber fibromyalgia and toothache so for fibromyalgia I like to use SAM E, so that's capital S A M, and then a little dash, and then a little E. And that helps with pain relief and helps improve the mood. Now, I also use SAM E just in general, just for like overall mood and brain, like chemical function. Like if you're just kind of like down, and you're just, you're feeling the big sads, you know what I mean? Like SAM E is a really great one. I actually, I will add one more thing after the fibromyalgia and the toothache, and we can talk about the big sads and what I take for those. And so we can touch on move, mood improvement. So, okay. So for fibromyalgia, I use the SAM E, um, and that helps with pain relief and improve the mood. And then ginger. Now, again, ginger is anti-inflammatory and it helps with pain. So it is really good for fibromyalgia. I would suggest a ginger tea. You can also get supplements, but a tea is just so nice. You can just brew like a ginger tea in the morning or before bed. And it's just something kind of warm in your cup and you can sweeten it how you like. So I use honey. So I just brew a ginger tea and I have it with some honey. And it's so delicious. I absolutely love it. And then magnesium is another one. And then willow bark. So willow bark is very similar to aspirin. 
and you can use it as a tea or you can get it in a supplement. So dealer's choice. So for fibromyalgia, that was Sam E, ginger, magnesium, willow bark. All right. So for toothache, I like to use, so first of all, for overall oral health, I really love to talk to people about this because when we go to the dentist, like sometimes, like it's just like being pushed to, you know, get cavities filled in or like, you know, like, oh, like tooth decay and you can't reverse it and all these crazy things. Well, I do not believe that at all. Tooth decay is 100% reversible to some degree, depending on like how bad it is. And it is just really important to take care of our overall tooth oral health because it connects to all parts of the body, like our heart. So it's just really, really, really important. A lot of the times if people have really bad oral health, they might have heart issues, etc. So it's just, it's really, really important. So the first thing I like to do for a toothache is a salt water rinse. This is going to help with pain and it's going to help reduce inflammation. Other things you want to introduce into the diet with a toothache or tooth pain is going to be garlic, ginger, and willow bark. Now, it is really important also if you're taking care of your oral health to make sure you're thoroughly brushing and flossing your teeth. I don't use any toothpaste with fluoride. Um, I feel like for obvious reasons, we can talk about that another time. But um, supposedly, like, you know, fluoride, when applied directly to the teeth, it does help prevent cavities. However, there are so many other things that can help prevent cavities. So it just genuinely is not necessary for human consumption in a daily use in a toothpaste. And that is my opinion. So I opt for a toothpaste that doesn't have it in it. And I think I use like the Himalayan toothpaste. You can get like a bunch of different kinds. It's like a turmeric one. I use like the pomegranate neem. Um, because again, like neem is really good for like antibacterial. So Love that. So we use I use pomegranate neem, the Himalayan brand for toothpaste. But um, the garlic, again, is really good for antiviral and antibacterial. And then the ginger is good for the anti-inflammation. And the willow bark is going to act like an aspirin. So all of those things are going to be really amazing for toothache. And then once you're taking care of that toothache, once you like I've, I've like once I've done all those things then you can really focus on making sure the mouth is clean. So like making sure you're brushing before bed. And then in the morning, um, if you are trying to reverse like tooth damage, like a cavity, it could also be very beneficial to brush the teeth in the middle of the day as well. So that's three times and using a very soft toothbrush, not pushing too hard, just kind of getting all of the bacteria out of the mouth. That way the teeth and the mouth is able to naturally heal itself because once you get all of the bacteria out, that's creating like the acid that eats away at the teeth. Then your mouth has like a little fasting time or period of time between meals. Like when you're not eating to heal itself. So I hope that has helped. So the last thing I want to touch on, I did not take notes on. And I just thought like, oh, let's talk about improving the mood. So these are some things that I absolutely love for mood improvement. So it was the Sam E. That's the capital S-A-M with a little dash and then a little E. And that helps with pain relief and mood. And I had that list for fibromyalgia, but it also really helps me with mood. I also love GABA. So that's G-A-B-A and it's all capital letters. It is one of my favorite supplements, GABA. And then L-theanine. So it's like L with a dash and then theanine is probably my absolute favorite for mood improvement. And that also is naturally occurring in matcha tea. So if you do like matcha, um, if you like caffeine, then that is something that can be very helpful. I love matcha, but I'm very particular. I'm a little bit of a matcha snob, I would say. Uh, I was a flight attendant for years and me and my husband travel a lot. So in every different city all over the world, like we would go and I would go into these tea houses and I would always, I was always, always, I would always try their matcha because I was just like, I need to try their matcha, see, see how it is, see how they make it. So I have a very particular, um, 
brand of matcha that I like. So I actually don't really buy matcha out anymore unless I go into a place and I'm like, yo, I think they're going to have like amazing matcha. Like then I will get it, but I don't waste money on it anymore. I just get it delivered to my house and I make it at home the way I like it because I think it's just better that way. So you can buy, get a good quality ceremonial brand of matcha. The difference between like a ceremonial brand, like a grade and like a culinary grade is it's kind of like coffee, you know, like you can get like a one note coffee, like a flat coffee, like a diner style coffee. It's still coffee, tastes like coffee, but it's not as good and robust. It's like a really good coffee that's like roasted with different notes and it just like hits your palate and like washes all over your mouth in a way where you don't even necessarily need anything else in it you know like sometimes you might want a splash of cream but you don't really need to dress up a good coffee and that's how I feel about matcha you don't really need to dress up a good matcha with a bunch of other like sugary additives so with the matcha um, I like to have mine iced and like I said, it comes with a natural L-theanine and it's slow releasing. So it really helps with your mood. So I like to just make it at home. I You have like a little blender, like a, what is, what is it called? Not a blender, but like a little, the hand ones, you know? So I put it in my cup. I mix up the matcha in the water and then I put milk in it. And so it turns into like a light green. And then sometimes I might put a little bit of honey. It really just depends. I buy um, a plain matcha, a chocolate matcha, and a vanilla matcha. And they are all absolutely incredible and they are not sweet. So like the chocolate and the vanilla have the chocolate notes and the vanilla notes. But they are like roasted in a way in there where it isn't sweet, which is absolutely incredible. So Sometimes I have it without anything, just like the matcha and the milk. And sometimes I have it with a little bit of honey. It really just depends on the day. So those are just the things that I would suggest for mood improvement. And again, that's like if you're feeling really sad, if like for me, like it would be a, I guess, a suggestion for a other options than an SSRI. Now I do value that SSRIs exist. That is something I really want to touch on. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking any other type of, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking information, (laughs) medication uh, from a doctor, like antibiotics, if they're prescribed for something that you absolutely need antibiotics for, or SSRIs that you might absolutely need at this time. Um, any other pills for any other type of ailments, you know, like I think they are very beneficial and I think they're very, very necessary. However, not everybody wants to use them and that's okay too. Uh, I've definitely used both. And for me, I found like, oh, I actually don't need this because I think sometimes as people, now this is just for the large population. There is a smaller population I feel like who genuinely needs them or could benefit from them. This is just speaking for myself and for like maybe a larger part of the of the population that gets pushed on taking different types of pills because they feel different types of emotions that are actually normal and we don't necessarily recognize them as normal because in society we kind of pretend like we should feel a certain way all the time when that just isn't how the human body is meant to function. Like certain emotions and feelings are put in place for a very particular reason. So because of that, these other things can really just like help the mood. Now, of course, exercise and getting proper sunlight to me is like the holy grail. Like that is like the absolute thing that needs to be happening. So if you aren't getting regular exercise and you aren't going outside and like soaking up in the sunlight, um, that can also affect your mood a lot. So that's really important to remember. But if you're looking for a supplement, I would suggest the SAMe. I would suggest the GABA and the L-theanine. Those are all the things that I use and I absolutely love them. And I notice a difference when I take them. If I'm in a place where I absolutely feel like I might benefit from them first when I don't. Other things that really help for mood improvement for me other than those other than the vitamins are going to be exercise, getting proper sunlight, and honestly just taking time for myself. I journal. Um, so I don't journal about like my day-to-day life. I journal um, about aspirations and I journal about things that I want to happen, things that I like about myself. I call it my 
attraction journal. So I try to journal every single day about things that I am appreciative for, things that I am grateful for, and things that I want to come into fruition. That's how I journal. So maybe that'll help someone who like doesn't like journaling about like their day because I could never get into that. That just was not my thing. I had zero desire to like sit down and like write in a journal about like things that I already did made no sense to me. Um, but to journal about things and remind myself, like, I am so grateful. I'm thankful for this. Like, like, thank you, like, for like providing me with everything that I need. Like, I'm so healthy, like little things like that, like affirmations, like in my journal really help like a good tone to kind of start the day. And I found it very beneficial. So and meditation, which I've definitely been slacking on recently, but it can help. And the thing about meditation is I know it can be kind of difficult. Uh, it definitely is for me a lot of the time. Um, it's uncomfortable. It just is, you know, sometimes it's just like uncomfortable to like sit there with your feelings and your emotions, your thoughts, but it actually helps us adapt in the world. So when we think about like yoga practice and like movement, like it's very challenging like mentally and physically. And so is meditation, especially when you're a beginner. It's very challenging because it's presenting you with something that you're not used to doing. And it can be very, very beneficial for just the brain and your overall mood. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you have gained something from listening to this. And I hope this has helped in some type of way. And maybe you can use some of the tips and tricks that I use and some of the herbs or teas that I use. And maybe it'll help uh, for some of you or all of you or maybe none. So (laughs) I hope that you all have an absolutely magical day. And until next time, thank you and namaste.